Hello, I'm Natalie Becker. Welcome to It's Africa's Time. Today we travel in Nigeria with global giants Dangote and Coca-Cola to discuss their training programs, small business incentives and corporate social investments. We focus on the impact of these initiatives on grassroots transformation within the Nigerian society and in particular on the long-term benefits for women and unemployed youth. But first, we chat with Moi Solo Akwajiu from the United Nations Development Programme about inclusive business in Africa. For encouraging African governments to set new benchmarks, well, it's going to be about actually negotiating with the elites who right now have got control of all the production factors in Africa. They've got control of the politics as well to create greater space for the poor, to actually have a voice in the way that things are run, to actually have a say in the way that they want to see development and what should be going on. We're also working with government to ensure that whatever policies are created, whatever programs are designed and are being implemented, take into consideration issues that affect the poor one way in which we're instrumental in ensuring that SMEs are taken into consideration so the capacities are going to be built, availing of opportunities provided within those value chains and for linking them to big business. Uh, there's a lot of conflicts in different parts of Africa and that is bringing home to us the need to, for greater involvement of the masses. And once people are beginning to sit up to recognize that yes, the poor also have to be listened to, then it won't be you know, such a long distance to persuading them to say, create more space and get them to be more involved. The overall vision of Dongote Group is trying to transform Sub-Saharan Africa and eventually maybe Africa as a whole. Cement is one of the key areas that we believe will be able to transform uh, Africa with. We have rolled out massive expansion plants of which I believe in the next two and a half years in cement alone we'll be producing 55 million tons in about 16 African countries which is quite a lot. We are into various type of activities, including we are in integrated cement plants, we are putting up grinding plants, and we are putting up cement terminals. The journey of Dangote Cement started in the year 2000, and today there were three Nigerian plants all using superior technology, unrivaled in Europe or the US. The company's focus is to produce extensive quantities of high quality cement, with an emphasis on social and environmental responsibility for the business's long-term sustainability. The Obajana plant, the single largest cement plant in sub-Saharan Africa, produces over 10 million metric tons per annum. In Nigeria, which was the second largest, are the first largest importer of cement in the world, virtually all the importation has gone. So every single importer has gone into manufacturing. So it has really transformed the country. It has conserved a lot of foreign exchange because cement used to be a major drain on the government's resources for foreign exchange. Generated a huge employment potential because uh, all this manufacturing activity coming in, exploitation of the uh, raw material which is available in the ground, so there is a huge value addition within the country. And it has been a big boost to the economy. We brought in the experts from these various countries, trained, retrained, and retrained, and thus we developed a pool of people who could manage those plants. Now we've started going to rapid expansion. So we realized that this is a key activity for us, so we started the Dangote Academy in Obajana where we had the first cement plant. Yes, there are graduates out there, but most of them do not have the immediate skills that the companies require. It's our role as governments, as businesses, to create that space. And I think we give a lot of lip service to issues of youth, but we're actually not doing enough to allow them to you know, participate 
in the transformation. And they are the ones who are really going to carry out the transformation. We work with the best technical training provider in Nigeria, which is ITF, and they have been able to work a curriculum designed with us, which is made for us. And it's three months of skills acquisition at their training center in Lagos. After that, these trainees are moved to our plant where they undergo in-plant training. Over the last uh, five years or so, we have collaborated with Dangote Group, especially in the area of uh, train the trainers of the, uh, the, of the Dangote Technical Academy. We have offered them courses in uh, electrical, electronic maintenance, in mechanical machine fittings, in welding and metal fabrication, and uh, in instrumentation process control. Right now, my trainees are working on, on surface wiring system. Two points of light controlled by individual switches. We make use of this board to do the practical installation work. Then the second aspect is industrial installation work. For industrial installation work, we deal with electromechanical controllers. Then we have uh, this uh, like a simulator where we uh, we use in the training trainings. It's called the electromechanical controllers. It would have been difficult getting a job without the Dangote Training Academy because we have um, fast growing industries here. With your skills and vocational training, you can gain employment easily. I would like to see myself working in Dangote Group, holding a good post, and also impact on others what have been impacted in me. Within three years, the Academy has trained and absorbed almost 600 people for employment within the group. It is also an umbrella organization which addresses the overall training and talent development needs of the group. Therefore, in addition to the provision of technical training, management development programs have also been instituted for existing staff members in the areas of communication and IT, as well as supervisory development. Well, the strategic objective, first of all, is to broaden the knowledge base and secondly, to make sure that yes, whenever we need people to employ who can actually work, employable people, that academy will produce them. And it's not only for us. When we finish training them, you can either work for us or we'll look for a job for you elsewhere. We also were mindful of the fact that we have a obligation to the society. People in one batch, 85% we take and absorb them within the company and balance 15%. We leave it out, give it to the industry by training them free of cost for them to be absorbed in any company. The Dangote Academy in Nigeria may not be able or may not be sufficient to fulfill the requirements of our businesses in other parts of Africa. So our plan is also to look at very seriously build two more satellite Dangote Academies, one in Western and Central Africa. The country has not been decided, could be Senegal or could be any other French-speaking country, and one in South Africa and East Africa. And this academy, we are now trying to transform that uh, you know, academy into a university so that we are now training all our artisans, our engineers, including taking them abroad for a course. With a population of 170 million, there are lots of Nigerians, and the resources that, we, that are available to a bank like ours are, is quite limited. Uh, the government needs to concentrate a lot of resources in, in developing the infrastructure, which in Nigeria has a lot of resources that can be developed uh, to impact our economy. And we found that at the bottom of the pyramid and the small and medium enterprises, mostly is a family business and they don't have a structure. Uh, it's just more problematic and the bankers see it as really high risk. So we did approach Aliko Dangote to say this is the kind of problem that we have. The Dangote Group responded by designing a joint financial program with the Bank of Industry, where each would contribute 10 billion naira or $70 million to a loan fund. 
The Dungote Foundation at a zero interest rate and the bank at a reduced rate of 10%. Beneficiaries therefore have access to loan funding at an average interest of only 5% instead of the national average, which is around 25%. Well, the first cycle, right now we've had just a little under 150 groups. And the uh, groups, they range from eight people to 15. Agribusiness, value addition, mining, value addition. And we have a few um, distributors, traders, because we also need the logistics to move the goods from where they are produced to the market. So that can grow their businesses, so they become a medium. Then each one of them sometimes employs five people. And then those that sell it, and those from which they buy the raw material, and those are from which they buy the machines. So you can see how it, it actually impacts the entire system. And then we have another part which is a grant. This grant we are going to local governments, a thousand women per local government, so that they can start their petty trading. It keeps them busy. And then on the other part, the government will use their money to train them. But the money that we are giving is like a seed money for them to start business or to increase their working capital. At the bottom of the pyramid, it's huge. So far, we've reached just a little over 200,000 women. We started in January. Individuals can simply get up and create a business opportunity, provide a service, uh, use their intellectual property, you know, use their productive resources, borrow money, and create value as we see democracy taking root in Nigeria then, the role of uh, the private sector becomes more aligned and collaborative with, with government. I think it's also a question of what then is your role in, on the philanthropic side, you know, in terms of advocacy, in terms of policy, in terms of what you look at and how that then enables uh, your business to also continue to thrive. It's a foundation that was established by Mr. Dangote in 1993. Um, he felt it was very important that as his business was growing, uh, the give back to society would also grow. The level of giving last year was $100 million, so the programs have become quite large in health. The focus is on providing clean water and sanitation to communities, looking at strengthening healthcare facilities, we are looking at programs that have scale, that complement what government is doing, that demonstrate uh, different ways of, of doing business. But, you know, I think one can only look to see Dangote Foundation doing more and more. Uh, last but not least, Dangote Foundation will always be a good corporate citizen during times of, of, of disasters. So last year, Nigeria had massive floods. Uh, the group made the largest donation to that national effort. In Nigeria here, we have, we have a teeming young population. We have people with a lot of talent. We have entrepreneurs that are ready to go. And you know that when you're, you're very talented and you're almost a genius and you do not have anything to do, it just can cause trouble. So one is for security in our country, we have two, it will impact on our GDP. We have a saying here that you shouldn't go to sleep if you're if your neighbor is awake. So if we all have food to eat and we all can be productive and respectable citizens of the country, I think we'll have just a more beautiful and peaceful place. Every single country out of these 54 or 55 countries in Africa are blessed with a lot of things. The thing that we lack is actually the entrepreneurs to drive the same trajectory the Asian tigers had. You know, but it's going to come.
Nigeria has a population of 170 million people and half of these are women. I think there are a number of barriers that women face to doing business in Nigeria. Some of them are cultural, some of them are social, and some of them are economic. But I think that over the past couple of years, we've seen the cultural barriers diminishing because of the rate of urbanization and you know, the rate of um, women empowerment generally. Right now, we are dealing more with the issues that are economic. The 5 by 20 program is a program that was set up as a global initiative by the Coca-Cola Company and it simply means empowering and enhancing the livelihood of five million women globally by the year 2020. We in Nigeria have taken it upon ourselves to target 500,000 women by the year 2020, and that is 10% of the global objective. Women play a variety of roles, the most significant being in the distribution and retail aspect of the business. In fact, women own and operate over 70% of our distribution and retail businesses. The MDC, or Managed Distribution Center, is a business model developed by the Coca-Cola Company and implemented throughout Africa. The centers are administered by independent entrepreneurs, increasingly women, who distribute the beverages often on foot to small, hard-to-reach geographical areas. Because we train them on profit-making business, how to know the difference between their capital and their profit, and to manage their business. I have 29 MMDCs, and out of which 23 are women. If I rated my best three customers, they are women. Mrs. Adebisi Adebayo has been a Coca-Cola dealer since 1997, and her business was doing very well. However, when her husband and ex-policeman died in 2008, leaving her with the responsibility for their three children, she was concerned about how she would manage alone. Then in 2011, thanks to the 5x20 program, Adebisi was among a group of Coca-Cola dealers in Lagos whose commitment and performance was rewarded through their appointments as operators of the Managed Distribution Centers, or MDCs. She was enrolled for business and financial skills training in the same year and has attended several refresher courses since. Her working capital was also boosted by a revolving trade credit of about $13,000, which she turns over weekly. I can say categorically that she has doubled the volume and her workforce has increased. She is now very important in the community and driving business there. When I lost my husband, I wanted to pull out. But after the training, I'll be doing my business by myself and the thing is going on gradually. I didn't even believe that it can be like this. So and it helped my family too. Now, two of them, they've graduated and one is still in the private university. And if I go down to each of the MDCs and look at their retail level, every day we enlist new retailers. And Adebayo, Lawal, a lot of them started with few, few crates. They are very big women. They fend for their family. They are breadwinners. Women are instinctively nurturing, and they take that skill to their, to their businesses as well. They are also natural relationship builders. That allows them to build strong customer relations as well as they are less distracted generally from their businesses. Our women in Nigeria are just generally or exceptionally entrepreneurial, and we're using the 5x20 program to enable that. And this is also uh, driven by the fact that a lot of our outlets are in neighborhoods, they are close to homes, so it fits into the, the life uh, style that is uh, there as well. Our business in Nigeria generally has a very low barrier to entry. You can literally start a business with less than $10. Um, second, we provide training in terms of business skills, training and development for women or our retailers and distributors in general, which helps them to sustain their businesses. And third is that we also enable access to capital for our retailers with a, with a special focus on our women entrepreneurs. This has enabled women 
who have established themselves and who are running originally small businesses to be able to expand. We select the women who attend this training in collaboration with our bottling partners. Uh, they are the ones who manage these relationships on a day-by-day -day basis and so they know what is the skill set that the particular woman requires in order to improve how she runs her business and then we send her for that particular model of the training. Eagle Square is situated in the central district of the capital, Abuja. It is surrounded by ministries and other public institutions, which provide customers for its bustling food court, where Mrs. Tete is the MDC or Managed Distribution Centre operator. Each of its outlets specialises in a different variety of dishes from a specific region to cater for civil servants and other customers from various ethnic groups. I started this business in year 2006. And my main activities is that I sell to food vendors in the Eagle Square food courts. Here, as you can see, we are many here, the women. We are different tribes. Yes, I face a lot of challenges. To, make, to start the business is not easy. Coca-Cola brings us chairs, tables. They really help us a lot. God bless them. The business, I use it to support the family and I create employment for other youths because I have about 12 of them working with me. Um, I run a restaurant here in the Eagle Square and I have about 11 workers that work with me in my shop and we cook different type of food. I do both indoors and outdoor catering. You know, it is not easy in Abuja here to start this type of business because of the high cost. Coca-Cola and NBC have been supporting us here by uh, branding this place, providing chairs, tables, they gave us ice blocks, ice coolers. And so we ensure that they have ice on a regular basis. Um, in some areas where it is very difficult, we actually have ice manufacturing plants to ensure that they are able to receive ice blocks, which also facilitates you know, the volume that they are able to sell in a given day. Uh, for some of them, we provide umbrellas. For some of them, we provide trolleys and push cards, depending on what level of business they are into. And for those who are in conventional shops where it is safe to put in you know, fridges, we also have cool as, as fridges that we also give to the women. These are things that we contribute to them that ordinarily they would have spent substantial sums of money if they were to invest in these things themselves. Eagle Square Food Court is my number one outlet. Every single day I come here because the volume has so much grown. And when I come here, as I'm arriving, the ice truck is arriving. They deliver the ice to them. They put in the ice bin. The vendors here come to pick the ice. Then they get the truck carrying the product comes along too. They get their products, they, they ice the products in the ice bin. This happened in the early hours, so that by 12, they can start selling their food with cold drink. This business has a great impact on me personally and my family. Through this business, I've trained my children. I assisted my husband and family. I've built a house. I bought a car. I'm now an experienced person in business. There is no business that I cannot lay my hand on now. Uh, my advice to other African women is that they can be a dealer, a retailer or an wholesaler. If they're into this business, they will make it very fast and it's really going to help their family a lot. Women really form a very strong bedrock of uh, the economic activities and it's the foundation by which homes are growing uh, in Africa. So I believe that this has a big economic impact on the families, it has a big health impact on the families, it has an impact on education of their children and the overall well-being of society in uh, Nigeria. Beyond the impact on their businesses or their finances, you find that as individuals, the women become even more confident. They can contribute not only in terms of finances, but also in terms of decision making in the households and of course in decision making in their communities as well. So they become more productive and more representative members of communities. We would like to set an example for other large corporates that are operating in Nigeria on how you can use your value chain to give back to the community and at the same time enhance your business. The UN MDGs, what that has done is to provide a broad framework 
where all the stakeholders, whether they be private sector, whether they be civil society organizations or government, and all sorts of non-state actors can actually come together. They have a framework within which you can make concerted efforts to achieve very definite and trackable goals. So for instance, if we're talking about nutrition, we, had, um, we have Nigeria currently trying uh, to join the G8 initiative for food security and nutrition. That's a very definite target to lift 50 million people out of poverty within the next decade. So that's really good. It provides that framework. And without the Millennium Development Goals, I don't think that we could have been talking all together, singing from the same hymn sheet. So the UN has been very, very instrumental. Thank you to all the partners and contributors who've helped to make this first series of It's Africa's Time possible. And a very special thanks to all our viewers. We'll be back again soon with Series 2. But for now, thanks for watching.